Single parenting isn't easy. We understand. Most parents don't plan to go it alone, but you can still make the most of this journey for your children and yourself. In fact, if you and your family are on that journey, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Single Parent Advocate Community and to our podcast. And here are your hosts, Single Parent founder Stacy Poitras, broadcast journalist, single dad and friend, Daryl Moody. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. This is the Single Parent Advocate Podcast. I am the aforementioned Daryl Moody, joining you from my home studio here in Orlando, Florida. Stacy is in those beautiful Single Parent Advocate Studios in Dallas. Special thank you to the folks at the Venture X Louisville, the realm at Castle Hills. And Stacy, let me just open up by wishing you a happy anniversary. We've been doing this show for a year now. Hard to believe that it's uh, an entire year has passed, but it's been a lot of fun and a great project. Oh, absolutely. Happy anniversary, Daryl. I think it's going to be an incredible next year as well. It's been a labor of love, learning how to uh, start start taking our talks um, onto this podcast. And I just know that it's uh, touching lives and and certainly appreciate everybody sharing their time with us for a whole year now. Well, I really enjoy doing it because it's kind of a break from, from what I typically do, which is journalism and news and, you know, talking about shootings and politics and and all of the terrible things that are going on in the world today. And, you know, let's position the show again for folks. We try to uh, provide a resource to our listeners. Uh, we we kind of alternate with guests uh, today. This week, we're just going to kind of talk about our own personal experiences. But we really want to kind of wrap our arms around our single parent community and, and share our personal stories and struggles and provide uh, resources through different guests that we have. And we really want to kind of give uh, our listeners uh, a chance to kind of learn from, you know, our experiences and what we're going through and the, the you know, the, the many trials and tribulations of being a single parent. But of course, none of this would be possible without the single parent advocate uh, nonprofit organization that you have there in Dallas. Why don't you bring us up to speed with what you've been working on? I know the golf tournament's right around the corner and you have been very busy. Absolutely, Daryl. Well, um, you know, we have been getting quite a few sponsorships and uh, working on getting golfers signed up. We have a lot of volunteers helping. It's just been a lot of fun. Uh, we're ordering our golf shirts that everybody will receive. We're going to be doing a golf tube. Every golfer will get a golf tube and some golf balls, and uh, we're having an air cannon and then uh, two area radio on-air personalities are coming to be our celebrities. One is from The Fan, um, and the other is from K-Love Radio, Miles in the Morning, and then RJ uh, are coming, and so we're just so bold to over excited it's our first time and every day is a new day as it relates to putting it all together but uh you know there's a lot of really positive energy behind it and i really am excited because after serving um our community for over 10 years i always wanted a way to make national single parent day special and make it a celebration of sorts you know and so this is the first time where we're not having an annual meeting on national single parent day we're having a party a golf party and so i hope it is something really positive that is going to move us all forward you know and help fund our outreaches and onboarding new families as as the year progresses so yeah and to the listeners if you're not following single parent advocate on social media i highly recommend you do so because you're actually you know as you get different organizations and businesses there in the the, uh, greater dallas fort worth area as they kind of come on board with this effort you're sharing different things that you're going to have available at the golf tournament one of which is uh courtesy of the texas rangers you've got some tickets to a baseball game that are going to be raffled off tell me about that well you know um when you're doing fundraising uh you know you ask area venues and and teams to help support you know your fundraising efforts and certainly the texas rangers uh answered my email with these uh four vouchers that will be uh given to a raffle prize winner uh, 
Six Flags Over Texas, Hurricane Harbor has donated uh, uh, two tickets to go to either Six Flags or Hurricane Harbor this year. KLTY Radio has donated um, you know, tickets to a water park and also to the Crayola experience. Um, there has been, uh, let's see, well, the fan and Caleb, I think I already mentioned this, they donated Mavs and Stars tickets. WFAA donated some tickets as well. A lot of our friends, Daryl, in the media here in Dallas are coming alongside of us. And then sponsor-wise, Huffines Automotive Dealerships has sponsored um, our four hole-in-ones. So there's going to be some amazing prizes there. Uh, Liberty Tax of Coppell has donated uh, money to pay for an air cannon on one of our holes. And so that'll be fun. And then um, Huffines of Corinth, Huffines Subaru of Corinth, sponsored, um, you know, uh, Silver Sponsor, I believe. And then right here, our friends that work Innovators Venture X, they're going to be donating all of the production. And uh, then lately, uh, MCL Construction of Texas came and they, along with Prosper Winehouse, are, do are sponsoring all of the golf shirts that the, the uh, golfers will receive. We've had uh, 717 Media come along and sponsor as well. It's just on and on about the support. Even my dentist, Daryl, bought a whole sponsorship. So it's so great to see the community rallying around single families and their kids as we kind of stick our neck out and do our first fundraiser. And, and just to remind the folks, what is the date of the tournament? It's going to be on March 21st, which is the first day of spring. And also Single Parent Advocate uh, has always acknowledged March 21st um, on the national calendar. It's officially National Single Parent Day. Awesome. So make sure that uh, if you want to get involved in the tournament, uh, log on to singleparentadvocate.org. You've got all the stuff there on the website if you want to sign up and uh, participate in the golf tournament. Well, yeah, we just have to click on the events tab. You know, Daryl, if you go to singleparentadvocate.org, you can click on events. And what will happen is you'll be taken to our special events page. It'll tell you all about what was going on with uh the golfing side of things and how to sign up. We're having a special right now, a early bird special for anybody who uh, goes ahead and gets their foursomes together. And then um, it also has a, a place that you can kind of read more about our celebrities. You can take a look at all the sponsors just in case I missed anybody. But, um, you know, I'm just super grateful. Even Matthew Six Ministries is returning. So, um, we got a lot to celebrate today. Very, very exciting. Uh, so Valentine's Day is just a couple of days away. And we were going to talk about that today because as single parents, you know, Valentine's Day has an entirely different meaning uh, for us than it does people who are married or people who, you know, are in a, a serious relationship. But, you know, it's very important that we still recognize this for our kids. And Stacy, you've you've not only written about the subject, you actually found a really good blog post uh, that you want to talk about. Yeah, I did. I wrote an article um, a while back. And, you know, if you look up single parent Valentine's, you may see my article from last year. And I talked a lot about, you know, what we can do to celebrate Valentine's Day. And I didn't really want to walk through that again this year. I thought I'd try to see what some other folks are saying. And I came across this uh, blog post from the positivemom.com, how to find joy in being a single mom on Valentine's Day. And part of what this author spoke about really resonated with me, Daryl, because you and I have talked about a couple of of serious uh, things going on in our lives. And certainly there are a lot of serious things going on in the world. And, um, you know, it can kind of turn off that, uh, you know, oh, it seems petty to look at Valentine's Day, or it seems like this isn't what I should be focusing on. And one of the things that the person says, says um, that they didn't really want to teach their children that relationships were a waste of time 
or a couple of other important perspectives just because it's not feeling like a natural fit for them this year. So I thought maybe you could talk about, you know, what you and the girls are going to be doing. And, and then maybe I could talk about, you know, this article and, and how I feel like that this perspective could be something that we could all carry with us. Well, for me, you know, being a single dad with two little girls, um, for me, the most important reason to, uh, I don't want to say celebrate, but, but the most important reason to mark Valentine's Day is to model for my girls that they should be, you know, treated a certain way. So, you know, we're going to do flowers, we're going to do candies, we're going to do a special dinner that they're going to, you know, that they want to have. Uh, last year, we did something a little bit different. We actually volunteered at a women's shelter. Uh, volunteering is something that I, that I find really important, especially for my kids, because I want them to understand that, you know, not everybody has the uh, advantages that they're growing up with and that it's really important to give back to your community. So last year, we went to a women's shelter and we helped stuff gift bags uh, for the women there. And we spent a few hours with them uh, at the shelter and kind of, you know, heard their stories. And my girls talked about why they like to volunteer with a particular nonprofit uh, that we work with here in Orlando called One, uh, One Heart uh, for Women and Children of Central Florida. The, the, uh, Miss Stephanie runs the, uh, Stephanie Bowman runs the, the charity. And, and, you know, I've worked with her off and on for the last 10 years or so, uh, just kind of highlighting the work that she does in the community. So we have a relationship with her and with that particular organization. So we spent the day uh, doing that. But, you know, I, as, as a single guy, and I am single this, this Valentine's Day, you know, it's not really important for me because I don't have a significant other in my life right now, but it really is important for me to make sure that I do those things for the girls. So like I said, we'll have flowers, we'll have candies, we'll do a special dinner for them. And uh, I think it's important to do that, not only for the girls, but to model for them so that they can have that expectation as they become young women. Oh, and absolutely. And that's so important coming from a father, you know, especially for a young lady. And I just really applaud you for that. And, you know, giving back is, is a really great way to celebrate love. And anyway, Valentine's is, is a celebration of love in all of its forms. You know, whether it's the love of community, the love of our kids, the love uh, and appreciation of our family, extended family, uh, friends and neighbors, and, and truly the love of ourselves. I feel like sometimes we're not feeling the love, though. <laughs> and I, I want to make sure that we all kind of take the perspective of, you know, let's let's uh, draw from our inner strength and and share uh, what love what love can and should be, even if it's not romantic love. And I know I'm kind of repeating my own article, but what I really love about what Elena Fernandez says um, in her Positive Mom blog, she says, um, when we ignore Valentine's Day or kind of tend to have a sour feeling toward it and then we express it, we chant telling our kids that relationships are a waste of time. We chant even letting that sink deeper in our own hearts and lives, you know, and bitterness is certainly not a place where things get better. Bitterness makes things get worse and worse. But the other uh, thing that she wrote that really kind of stuck with me was when we lose hope in other potential partners, you know, uh, we tend to teach our kids that there's no one honorable left. There's no one worth our time. It kind of is a jaded uh, approach to humanity, much less uh, the only own potentials for love and relationships in our own lives. And certainly, you know, bitterness is, is uh, not something we want to teach our kids to, to live with or, or generate in their own hearts. Um, what do you think about that, Daryl? Well, from my perspective, it's, you know, it's kind of easier for me because I have girls. So, you know, it's, it's a, you know, there's the daddy daughter 
uh, kind of dynamic there. So, so, you know, they are essentially my Valentine right now, but as a single mom, you know, if you've got girls or boys and girls, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. Uh, there were some, some interesting suggestions in here uh, in this blog post about ways that you can celebrate Valentine's Day. Which one stood out to you? Well, one of the things that I kind of stuck with was really more toward the end of, of Elena's article. And, and she talks about how we ourselves choose if Valentine's Day is the best holiday on earth or if it's a, you know, over commercialized holiday um, or if we're going to just, you know, put on a fancy dress and make it a great day or, you know, ourselves or if we're going to stay at home and uh, chill, you know, we are in charge of our own destiny. And if we choose to be positive, then that is truly the most powerful thing we can do for ourselves and our kids. No, I, I completely agree. Uh, you know, like I said, for, for me, we don't, um, I mean, I'm not going to go overboard and get them both tennis bracelets or anything like that, but you know, there, there will be gifts and for me, I, I love to spend quality time with family and, and you know, I, I, not just because I love to eat, but, you know, I spent a lot of time waiting tables in Italian restaurants over my adult life. And I fully believe that, you know, food can be an expression of love. So for me, you know, I'll have, I will, we'll, we'll plan a meal out and the girls will help me cook dinner. Uh, it'll probably be steaks. I'm raising my kids, right. They love steak. So, uh, we'll probably <laughs> do something like that, but, uh, you know, it's it. however you choose to do it. You know, I mean, if you can't afford to go buying flowers and candy and all that stuff, then, you know, play a game, make it a movie night. You know what I mean? There are other, there are all sorts of ways that you can, can mark Valentine's day and make it special for your kids without spending a lot of money. And I, that's what I plan to do. Yeah. In the article, even it says celebrate today, right? You know, um, any day above ground is a good day. <laughs> you know? So I think that that was really, really good. The other thing that she talks about is uh, celebrate who you are, get into a little bit of self-gratitude and some affirmations. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're facing a lot of change or a lot of, of things, but, you know, she talks about being a child of God and, and celebrating faith. And she even suggested writing yourself a letter of what you love about yourself. I did that in counseling one time. I had to write you know, a few letters. One was to my parents and one was to me. Have you ever done that? Written a letter to yourself, Daryl? Oh my, uh, no, I can't say that I have. I mean, you know, obviously in, in my own uh, personal journey through counseling and therapy and all that stuff, I mean, I've learned to kind of reflect more and to, uh, you know, when you get down on yourself, kind of focus on, on things that are positive about yourself so i get the concept but no I, I i can't say that i have ever written a letter to daryl well maybe that's a good thing maybe this this year you can write a letter to you i might do that i don't know like i said we've we've got our we've got our our, our valentine's day plans we'll uh we'll make a nice dinner together uh although valentine's day is on a monday and that's not my night with the kids so we'll have to celebrate valentine's day sunday night which which will be you know a little different but uh Perhaps I'll teach the kids to do that self-love kind of, you know, appreciate yourself. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's very right brain for me. And I'm very left brain oriented as, as our listeners uh, probably have picked up on by now. But uh, yeah, I mean, certainly there's value in that. Oh, well, I think, um, you know, one of the other valuable things she talks about in this article, Daryl, is about celebrating where we are, which is exactly what you just did. You know, it's making sure that our relationship status doesn't define our self-worth or even our ability to have joy in our hearts. You know, uh, there's a lot of uh, truth behind that. I know for myself, um, I think for many of my years, I, I didn't consider myself, you know, good or desirable or whatever word you want to use there. If I wasn't uh, in a relationship, especially in my younger years. And now, you know, I think my relationship with myself, I've learned uh, needs that attention. And no, no matter whether I'm in a relationship 
or I'm not, um, I can be content and I can be, um, you know, just embrace the season, if you will, and then allow myself some happiness. You know, have you ever had those kinds of feelings where your self-worth is attached to your relationship status? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I, I have. I have made dating a priority since I got divorced, uh, you know, a few years ago, but uh, I'm also at a place now where I just, you know, I, I really feel like focusing on my kids and my career is more important right now than focusing on dating. I mean, you know, you could say maybe that's because I got burned a few months ago and I'm still a little hurt from all that, but uh, the truth is, I'm, I'm, I'm personally, I'm learning to be content uh, being single. And uh, there are, there are, I'm finding some things out about myself that I, that I didn't necessarily allow myself to learn because, you know, ever since I got divorced, my, you know, my focus has been on trying to rebuild the life that I think I should have. And I uh, have placed a value on having a significant other in my life. Now that being said, you know I've, I've dated a few women over the last few years, and I'm, I'm I don't want to say that I'm becoming jaded, but uh, I don't know that I attach the same value with having a significant other. And for me, I am at a place right now where I would rather focus that effort and that attention on my girls, and yep. and 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 building my relationship with my girls. I don't. I mean. I think what really brought that home for me was the last woman that I had dated. My kids started saying that, you know, you're different ever since you started dating woman. Oh, X. So. Uh -huh. And, and, you know, that really, uh, I don't want my kids to, and I, one of them, the younger one even said, you know, she's more important to you than we are. And that really hurt, you know, and I, and the last thing I want is for my kids to think that, that, you know, whoever I'm dating is more important than they are. Granted, Claire's six and she doesn't really understand what she's saying most of the time, but uh, the sentiment behind that really had an impact for me. So, uh, you know, on this Valentine's Day, I am happy to be single and I am going to focus uh, on my girls who are my Valentines. They are, they're precious. I love them so much. I love it when I get to see them on screen, you know, but there's a truth to that, whether there's like a little bit of jealousy or envy or insecurity when like when you see another couple or a couple and they're all gooey in love and they're not necessarily trying to make you feel bad, you know, it's really kind of hard to be around. You know, I have experienced that lately um, where there's a friend of mine and she started dating someone and uh, she just wants to talk about it and tell me about it. And she's so excited. And, you know, I, I'm just going through some personal things in my own household and I'm not really wanting to talk about those things, Daryl. It's crazy, but, you know, I, I guess it's sort of like stinking thinking, you know, and in, instead of just, you know, having, uh, an open ear and being excited, I kind of shy away from the topic. And Elena brings it up in this article. And I just, you know, she talks about celebrating love. And, you know, if somebody's got romantic love around us to give them congratulations and wish the best for themselves. And don't let our inner, inner um, voices navigate toward comparison or complaining or condemning or competing or even criticizing. Like she really uh, encourages us that if we have committed couples that are, you know, in our lives on Valentine's Day, one of the best things we can do is to give them congratulations. And even though we're still single or are single, you know, well, I, like I said, for me, you know, in the last few months, I have really come to find a contentness in being single. And, you know, I got to be honest, it's kind of nice not having to call somebody before I go to bed every night. You know, it's it's uh, it's it. You know, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying a level of freedom that I didn't allow myself to enjoy before, because, like I said, you know, ever since I got and I didn't want to get divorced. But, you know, after I got divorced, I 
had basically said to myself, I've got to rebuild the life that I want. And, and, you know, the cornerstone of that is a good, is a good partner and a good mate. And that's what I'm going to focus on, on finding. And, you know, people tell you that, you know, the best, the best time to, to find love is by not looking. And, and that's not necessarily my, uh, my motivation or my goal, but I just, you know, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying being single at this, at this point in my life. I've got two little girls that, you know, if I, if I do it right, they're going to require a lot of my attention. And uh, that's kind of my focus right now. And I, I don't, I'm not lonely on Valentine's day, probably for the first time in a long time. Um, I'm just really, really impressed with that. You know, I think that it's, it's a time when we, we celebrate love of, uh, of each other, of our kids, of God, of self, of those who, we think are people that we appreciate for whatever reason and uh, having a heart of gratitude. One of the, one of the last things I, I think that I think is said so well in this article is, is, you know, being the change that we seek in the world. So if we want our kids to experience love, we need to emulate that and, and, and need to cultivate our hearts and our heads and our minds and even our actions and reactions to reflect that and to channel that to those around us. And leading with love is one of the greatest things that we could do. I think sometimes we walk into a room and we're there to receive love, receive approval, receive fellowship right? But when we can walk into the room and we're there to spill all those things out, leading with love, that's what Valentine's is all about, is how can I pour out appreciation, validation, gratitude, and whatever love form of love is needed on this day, by those around us because it, it's not a waste of time well and i was going to say and what better way to to express that than the unconditional agape love that we have for our kids that's right absolutely it all starts at home and um i really i really love this talk i love uh not not to be like too mushy or whatever but i I really think if we set our hearts and our minds on um, where we want to be as it relates to being the change that we seek or being someone who is there to give rather than always get, whether it's with our kids or uh, a group we're reaching out to or neighbors or family, all of those people um, even our pets, they are our lives and um, as are our own hearts and minds that we cultivate. And so a day of love and appreciation and affection and joyfulness is in order, whether we're in a romantic relationship or not, I think. And you can still honor your friends that are in romantic relationships and celebrate that too. Well, like I said, for me, I, I uh, you know, rather than being jealous of people who are in a romantic relationship and gushing about that uh i just focus on on you know being happy that i am not yeah as well, odd I, as that sounds well and i love how she closes her article it says be positive and you'll be powerful and i thought wow that's just the power of positivity and love forgiveness peace all of that so i love that and uh, i'm glad we talked about this today going into Valentine's. I think it's, you know, some people are reticent. Some people are excited and other people are neutral with the topic, but I think it's, it bears uh, bringing up and I'm glad you're willing to go into that with me. And I hope you and the girls have a lovely Valentine's day, even though it's the day before. Oh, we've got, we've got some ribeyes that will uh, meet the grill Sunday night for sure. <laughs> That's going to be good. Well, I think that, um, you know, that's pretty much what I what I had on my mind today. Did you have anything else you wanted to talk about? No, I think I think we've covered all of it. I hope the I hope the listeners got a lot out of the conversation. Absolutely. And if you want to read Elena's article, you go to the positive mom.com, how to find joy in being a single mom on Valentine's Day. But I think it applies to single parents of all kinds, whether you're a single grandparent, a single father, 
uh, you know, there's a lot of good perspectives that she kind of spelled, spilled forth that I think will uh, be great for us to remember this this weekend and always. Well, folks, that's uh, that's the show for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, also, don't forget singleparentadvocate.org under the events tab. Sign up for the golf tournament coming up March 21st. And uh, don't forget to follow the Single Parent Advocate on social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, all of the various social media channels. So uh, again, Stacy, great show. Absolutely, you guys. And if you want to look on social media for the golf tournament, we have it posted an event on Facebook and also on LinkedIn. Uh, definitely uh, connect there. Uh, we, we want everybody involved who can be. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Day of Love to all of you. Happy Valentine's Day to you too, Stacey, and to all you listeners. Take care of yourself. All right. Bye till next time. Bye-bye.